Welcome back to the Getting Started with OpenScope MZ video series. I'm Sam Kristoff from Digilent, and in this video, I'll introduce you to the oscilloscopes. I've already launched Waveforms Live, so I'll click on my OpenScope MZ to set it as the active device and navigate to the instrument panel. Each oscilloscope channel has its own section in the control panel. By default, oscilloscope channel one is expanded and enabled. I can use the arrows to expand and collapse the other oscilloscope channels if I want to save space when I'm not using them. Right now, I have oscilloscope channel one connected to the function generator. So I'll enable the function generator, enable channel two, which is just floating, and click single to take a measurement. You can see channel one in orange is my one kilohertz sine wave, and channel two in blue is a floating input. Each oscilloscope channel has an anchor on the left side of the chart. Channel 2, the blue one, has a white outline. That means it's the active channel. Both channels share an x-axis, the time axis, and they're synchronized around the trigger point, which is indicated by the green vertical line at T0. However, both channels have independent y-axes. Right now we're looking at channel 2 as the active channel, so we see its y-axis. But if I click the orange anchor, you can see it switches to channel 1. Right now, we can see that we have 500 millivolts per division. This is indicated on our chart with the units, as well as in our control panel in the volts per division section. I can change this by clicking the plus and minus buttons. And you can see both the control panel and chart update accordingly. I can also hold shift and scroll to change the volts per division for the active series. Notice when I do this, this the non-active series does not change. If I click that channel, you can see it's still at 500 millivolts per division, whereas channel one is one volt per division. Next, we have the offset. Again, I can change this by clicking the plus and minus buttons, say bump it to one volt. This will vertically pan the existing buffer data, and it also sets a new center point for future acquisitions. So if I were to do an acquisition now, the data would be sampled around a one volt center point. I can also hold shift and click and drag to pan arbitrary amounts. Next, we have the sample frequency and the number of samples. These values are automatically calculated based on the number of pixels in your screen and the time span in your current view. The goal is to keep the UI responsive and only sample as many points as you'll be able to see and sample as quickly as possible. The number of samples defaults to just over 3,000. And again, we want to sample enough points that you can see your data, but not so many points that we have a bunch of excess data. In some scenarios, you may want to explicitly set these values. You can do that by clicking the lock button to unlock the value and then change the rate. Say one capital M for one mega sample per second. If I click single, you'll see now since I'm sampling faster and I kept the same number of points, I see less of the total signal in time. And that covers the basics of the oscilloscope channels on the OpenScope MZ.